welcome again. Uh, this is video three of three, um, and this is the last video in this series of videos about Conda um, and how to do package management with Conda. Uh, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to create and access a new Conda environment. Um, and then um, I'll show you a couple of additional commands, like how do you get rid of an environment? Uh, and how do you, uh, for instance, uh, um, uh, update a new uh, or existing environment. So now I want you to head over to, to the terminal. Um, if you go back to the terminal, uh, so if you do conda env list, this is how you list uh, the environments that are available to you. It's because we can see that we have access to the base uh, only. Um, so the two ways uh, in which you can actually create a, a new conda environment, and one of them is to um, use the conda create dash dash name a command. Uh, in this case, you basically have to specify the name of the environment, and then we can specify the channels from which the package are going to come from, and then from here on, we can just specify a list of uh, packages that we care about. Uh, so in this case, I can do something like this. So this is an easy and quick way to install Conda. However, this approach has a couple of uh, shortcomings. One of them being that it's hard to keep track of what and when you install things. Um, so I'm going to suggest that uh, instead of creating an environment like this, you use a Conda environment file. Uh, and so what is a Conda environment file? So a Conda environment, is, a Conda environment file is a YAML file, so in this case, Let's go ahead and create a um, um, an empty environment file, and then let's open it. Um, so in this file, we want to specify a couple of things. One of them is the name of our environment. So we can go ahead and do analysis, and then the next thing is uh, a list of channels that we want to use. In this case, I only want everything to come from Condaforge. And then the third section is about dependencies. Um, so I'm going to uh, list a couple of things here. I'm going to install Python. I can specify the version that I want. Um, I'm going to install XRA. I want version greater than 0.16.2. Uh, and let's say I want say Dask, um, and so on. And then there's one additional package that you want to install in your Conda environment if you want to be able to access your Python kernel in the Jupyter Lab, and that package is called ipykernel. And then there's usually another section. Uh, so let's say um, there's a package that is not available through Conda and is also not available through pip. But it's available from GitHub. You can actually install a package uh, from GitHub by specifying an additional uh, section here where you do pip and then under this section and we can list um, basically you give it a path to to the GitHub repo. So I can just do git and then plus and then I can do https for instance github.com I don't know, I can just do like something like this, for instance. So Conda through pip will uh, download the package and then install it from source. So for now, we don't need this section, um, but uh, this is how you do it if you need it to install a package from GitHub. So now let's save uh, this environment file, and now let's run this command, so Conda env update dash f and then pass the path to, to the YAML file. What this command is going to do um, is Conda is going to look at your existing environments to see whether the specified environment uh, exists and if it exists it will just update it and if it doesn't exist it will create that environment and then it will install those packages uh, so this will take a couple of seconds uh, and then it will actually download a bunch of stuff 
in my case, I had already downloaded some of the, those packages, so it would actually use the cached versions of those packages to create that environment. Um, so if you see a list of things, um, don't worry about it. Uh, so this should end uh, anytime soon. So once this is over, then we can actually look at the updated list of Condor environments by running the Condor env list command. Um, now we should see both the base and uh, analysis. Uh, and as you can see, Condor is telling us how to activate our environment. So we can do Condor activate analysis. Now I can actually launch the IPython shell, and then I can start using some of these packages that I just installed. So take a few seconds, then Okay, so as you can see, um, so this is one of the interesting cases where you install some package, but then uh, you don't get all the dependencies. In this case, uh, we're trying to open an SCDF file, but an SCDF uh, library isn't installed. So what we wanna do is go back to our environment file and then list whatever additional packages we want to be installed. In this case, I want the 4 And then save that and then run the conda env update command again. And this will just update the environment. So since the environment already exists, it will just look at the difference between what exists already and what we define the YAML file and then we'll only install the, the difference. Um, so this should end very soon. Again, I already had these packages installed uh, before coding, so it's just using the cached version. Now if I uh, try opening that file again, and now it should work. All right, so now um, you can see that uh, we were able to create a new environment, we were able to use it from the command line. Uh, I'm going to switch gears and actually show you how to access the same environment from the Jupyter Hub. So you want to go to, to the Jupyter Hub, and then uh, you may be prompted to log in, um, and then I'm going to choose Casper, and then launch server, and I'm going to specify my project account, and then launch the job. So this will take a few seconds, or probably like a minute, uh, depending on how busy the system is. Um, um, so it's ready. Should show up very soon. Okay, so now all we have to do is close these things. Okay, so now what you want to do is go to file. So if you actually want to access the launcher, you can actually access it by going to file and then new launcher. And then you'll see a bunch of stuff. Um, and here is our analysis environment. Uh, as you can see, here's the name. And I think this is our base environment. Uh, I could be mistaken, but yeah. So as you install additional environments, they should show up here. So if you want to launch a notebook, you just want to create, you want to click on the widget that corresponds to whatever environment you want to 
launch.notebook in. So I'm just going to click here, and then it'll create a new notebook for me. Um, and I can change the kernel if I wanted to, if I just click on here, and then click on this drop down, and then I should have a list of available kernels, and then I should be able to select whichever one I want. In this case, I still want my analysis, and then I can just do what I just did uh, in IPython before. So yeah, there you go. Um, so now, um, before ending this video, let me show you one more thing. Um, and the thing is, let's say at some point you just want to get rid of uh, the created environment. Um, so the easiest, the easiest way to get rid of an existing environment is, first of all, make sure that you deactivate that environment. And then you want to run condor um, env remove and then dash n and then the name of the environment. In this case, I want to get rid of analysis. So this will basically uh, delete the existing analysis environment. Probably take a few seconds or minutes depending on how large your environment is. Now that environment is gone, if I do condor env list, I shall only see base. So yeah, so again, so we covered how to create a new environment and how to access it, how to update it, how to update that existing environment and how to get rid of it if we don't need it anymore. All right, so that's it for today. Um, and uh, if you have uh, more questions, um, I recommend that you uh, check out the Condo documentation page. Just search for Condo documentation and then you should see a um, couple of options. Um, so this page may not be, let's see, so yeah, so it will tell you a couple of things um, um, and you should be able to follow some of these tutorials. Some of them may not make sense. Uh, like for instance, this is talking about Windows, but on Cheyenne and Casper on Linux. Um, so yeah, uh, but the things that will basically be similar. So yeah, uh, that's it for today. Uh, thanks.